Okay, now we're going to look at some examples. Um, when I did the notes part, I accidentally stopped the recording uh, instead of pausing it. Uh, so now we just have a second one. So if you did not already take the notes part, um, then you'll need to do that first and then get the examples after it. Okay, so we're going to work some are from the classwork and some are the uh, maybe an even problem that you aren't assigned, but um, all of them are going to be ones to help you. First on number 12, um, and the directions um, for this section say find the vertex, the focus, and the directrix, and sketch a graph. So first off, if I want to identify which type of parabola this is, um, I identify uh, first to make sure it's in that standard form, but this one's not because it actually has to have the squared term on the left. Um, so if I was to move the 2x squared over, then it would be positive, and I move the y on the other side, then it would be negative. So if first doing that, then I would divide by 2 to get the x squared term by itself, and I would see that I have x squared equals negative 1 half y. So this is my standard form, and because I look to see about um, the x squared part, I know that that is a vertical parabola when the x is squared because the 4p value, which is the coefficient of the non-squared term, is negative, then uh, being vertical, then that means it opens down. So I always like to just kind of make those notes on the side to help me out because I'm going to have to sketch it also. Um, what's subtracted from x and what's subtracted from y in this format? Well, there's nothing there, so that really is a nothing, which is a zero. So the first part, what we need to determine is the vertex is zero, zero. And if I'm going ahead and start in my sketch of that, since it's opening down, well, we need to figure out what the p value is. So what I do is I take this whole negative one half and set that equal to um, 4p. 4p equals negative one half. So if I want to divide by 4, and because it's a fraction, I'm going to really just multiply by 1 fourth, and that's p equals a negative 1 eighth. Because I have to use that information to find my focus and my directrix. If my vertex is here, then the p mean negative means I'm going to go down a 1 eighth, and so I'm going to say 1 is here, and negative, or negative 1 and positive 1. So as a... Uh, negative one-eighth, then that means my focus is the coordinate zero, negative one-eighth. And the directrix is going to go one-eighth the opposite direction, and it is a line. So the directrix excuse me, is the y equals, it is horizontal, and so y equals a positive one-eighth. And then last is just to graph it. So we go through the vertex, it curves around the focus, and the way I like to say it also is the directrix is always behind it. So to make sure you're going the right direction. And that's for 12. The next one we're going to look at is 18. This is actually from your classwork. It says x plus 5 plus y minus 1 squared equals 0. So again, first of all, we're not in the standard form. The squared term needs to stay on the left, so that's a y minus 1 quantity squared. And when I move the x plus 5 over, it's going to be negative. I just want to put it as negative and keep that factored out of it um, because uh, that's going to help me to find that 4p value. Now, um, because the y is squared, let's put a few notes. That means it's horizontal. Excuse me. And that means because the negative, uh, the 4p is a coefficient of the x term, that's negative. That means um, that for horizontal, it's going to open left. Just making a few notes. Uh, the vertex, <clears throat> which is one of the things we have to find, is hk. Remember, h is with the x and k is with the y. So x minus h. So because of the minus, that means that our x or x value of the vertex, which is the h, is negative 5, and then k is a 1. 
So the vertex is at negative 5, 1. And I'll go ahead and start the graph. And then I'm going to uh, need to figure out what P is. So um, over here, I'm going to write um, just this coefficient part right here. Then that is negative 1. So I'm going to write 4P equals negative 1. Excuse me. And I'm going to divide by 4 to solve for P. So P being negative 1 fourth. Remember, this tells us our distance and our direction from the vertex to the focus. So from this vertex, I'm going to go a negative, which goes left, uh, 1 fourth, which is real close to that value. I mean, it's real, real close to it. And then I go the opposite way, the 1 fourth, to get the directrix. But to get the actual values, if I know my vertex, if I'm going left from the vertex, it's changing my x value. So really to get my focus point, because it's not a nice integer number, um, you could use it as a, <clears throat> excuse me, a negative 5.25, if you can do it that way. Or technically we have a negative 5 and we're going to subtract a fourth from it to go to the left. So if I need a common denominator, that's a negative 20 fourths and then minus 1 fourth, so that's a negative 21 fourths, comma 1 is the coordinate <clears throat> for the focus. Like I said, the, you could do negative, um, excuse me, negative 5.25 is also acceptable. <clears throat> the directrix will be going to the right from negative 5, so that means I'm doing negative 5 and then plus a 1 fourth which again, doing a common denominator would need to be a fourth, and that's a negative 20 fourths plus one fourth, which makes the negative 19 fourths. Or that would be a negative 4.75 um, if you go that way. And this one is x equals for the directrix. It is an equation of a line. So, or x equals negative 4.75 because we're taking or we're going to the right from there um, 0.25 um, and to finish the graph it goes through the vertex and it's opening left curves around the focus and the directrix is behind it the next one I want to look at with you is 23 it says y squared plus 6y plus 8x plus 25 equals 0. Sometimes it's not already in, you know, the standard form like the other ones haven't been, but we also might have to do the completing the square to get in the form that we need it. The squared term I see is y, and I do have another term that's just a y to the first power. So since the squared term needs to stay on the left, we're actually going to have to do completing the square for the y term. And if you remember that that's the, when you in general, I call it the plus blank, uh, you know, uh, form that you're going to do. Uh, but I need to move the other stuff over, and I'm going to leave a little space after the 6y. And so when I move the other stuff over, then those are opposite sign. <clears throat> so the plus blank is, I'm going to go ahead and add that in now. I have to add the same thing on both sides. Because um, to complete the square, you take... Um, and we can only complete the square if our uh, quadratic has a coefficient of 1, which it does. So I take the b value, which is 6, divide by 2, and then square it. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. And that means I am uh, adding 9 on both sides so that it keeps it equal. And I choose that value because that made a perfect square trinomial, and it will factor as a binomial squared, y plus 3 squ quantity squared. And on the left side, or I mean on the right, excuse me, we have to combine like terms. And then I notice also that it's not really in that form yet. We do have to factor out the GCF on the left. So I end up with, to get my standard form of my equation, I can take a negative 8 out of both. And what's left would be an x plus 2. And the negative 8 is going to be what our 4p will represent so that we can solve for p. So the vertex is h comma k. H is with the X, so that's a negative 2. K is with the Y. It's always the opposite sign because of the minus in the equation. So if I graph a negative 2, negative 3 as my vertex, I mentioned again, so I'm going to take this 
what's in front of that, I'm going to set that equal to 4p. So 4p equals negative 8 divided by 4. I get p to be negative 2. So back, I didn't put my other little notes, but because y was squared, that's horizontal. And because the p is negative, that means it's going to open left. So from the vertex, I need to go 2 to the left to get my focus. And sometimes when we're putting these dots and, you know, maybe V for vertex and F for focus, sometimes that's helpful. But the focus coordinate, then 2 to the left, is changing my vertex by subtracting 2 from it. That's a negative 4, negative 3. Um, or looking at it from the graph. And so that means I go 2 to the right and get the directrix line, which will be a vertical line at x equals 0. And last would just be to open it, draw it opening to the left, the rest of the sketch. Okay, next we're going to be looking at another section. Um, and these are going to be giving us, uh, asking us to find the standard form of the equation. Uh, with the given characteristics and the vertex of all of these are at the origin. So you have to keep that in mind. Every one of these will have that happening. So um, number 30, they have the picture um, and they give us a point. So um, I'll just remind us the vertex is 0, 0 and then um, the point on the parabola is negative 2, 6. Well first of all um, I can see visually that it is an opening left, so I know it's horizontal, and that indicates to me that the y is squared, and because it's opening um, left, then that means we have a, a negative p value. So I need to um, first, think of my equation with a 0. y minus the 0, which squared, which is by squared, equals. And then 4p, which we have to find, but 4p times x minus 0, and that x minus 0 is just x. We also had, if the vertex is 0, 0, we also had these formulas that, you know, were on the notes part also. Now, if I have to find p, if I had x and y, well, I do have x and y. I have a point. So if I plug in y, which is 6, and do 6 squared equals 4p times the x value of negative 2, I get to solve for p, and that is a negative 9 halves when I reduce. And then I just need to go back and plug it back in up here. So y squared equals 4 times negative 9 halves times x. And then 4 over 1, the 4 reduces with the 2, and that is a negative 18 over 1 times x, and that's y squared equals that. That's the equation that will give us that, you know, from that given information. The next one, 34, they tell us the focus. And again, remember that they give us the vertex at 0, 0, that was from the directions. So if I think of this at 0, 0 and 0, negative 2 as my focus, well, that means if since it curves around the focus that's opening down, I know it's vertical. I know it opens down. So that means x is squared. So my general formula I know because of 0, well, x minus 0 squared, equals 4p times quantity my minus 0. So we just get this originally. And because the p value, we don't have to plug in the x and y for a point this time because I can see that from the vertex to the focus, that means p equals negative 2. So if p is negative 2, then we're just going to plug that back in to solve for the equation of this parabola. 38 tells us the directrix is x equals negative 3. Once again, we still know the vertex is 0, 0 from the directions of this section. So if I make a quick sketch and I go to x equals negative 3, and I know my vertex is here, 
Well, then the directrix is the p-value behind the focus, and the p-value the opposite way gives us the, from the vertex to the focus, is the p-value the opposite way. So p, that means that it curves around the focus and the directrix lines behind it. This means it's um, horizontal and it does open to the right. So that means we have a positive p value and I can count and I see that p equals 3. So since it's horizontal, that means that y is squared. So y squared equals 4p times x. And if I know what p is, I'm going to just plug that in to get the equation of this parabola. And 39. This one tells us that it is a horizontal axis. So I know it's horizontal. And they give us the point is 4, 6. So this one, um, it goes back to, and I'll let you finish this one out, uh, but it goes back to like we did on number 30. So you might want to refer to it, but I need you to finish this one in your notes. <clears throat> So um, we start you though the because it is um, also again same section about the vertex being zero zero. So uh, y squared equals four p times x. So your point is x y and that means you're going to substitute those values in for x and y and solve for p and then go back and plug it back in. And the um, last one forty one. This one in this section is a little different. They give us some different pieces of information and the vertex is not necessarily zero, zero. This one you can see from the picture in the book, it is vertex at 3, 1. And they give us a couple of points on it. Uh, they give us two different points uh, at 2, 0 and at 4, 0. So initially I see that it's opening down, so I see it's vertical. I see it opens down and then Uh, so that I know I'm going to start with x squared, but it's x minus h. There's h and k, so x minus 3 quantity squared equals 4p times quantity y minus k, and k is 1. So now I see two different points I can use for x and y to solve for the, the p value, and I'm going to pick one. I'm just going to pick 4, 0. So I'm going to call that x and y. So in place of x, I'm going to plug a 4, and in place of y, I'm plugging the 0. Then I just bring down the rest of the problem. Uh, I plugged in the wrong piece. Sorry, y is 0, and then minus 1. So 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 squared, and then 4p times one, 0 minus 1 is a negative 1. That's a negative 4p equals, and 1 squared is 1, divide by negative 4. I get p is negative 1, 4. So I go back in and I have to plug that back in and 4 times the p value we just got times the quantity y minus 1. The final answer must have the letters x and y in them. 4 times the negative 1 fourth makes a negative 1. I could put the 1 but it's really just negative of that. There's the equation for that one. That is all.